God bless you. Thank you for joining me again. Dr. Kazumba Charles here. We have been looking at uh, the power of being free or the power of freedom and liberty. What true liberty really is, what true freedom really is. There are lots of people who are burdened by so many things and they are not experiencing the freedom that they need. In this program, we're going to be talking about how we remain free and how we get free and remain in freedom as God has set us free. As the Bible declares, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I want also in this program to emphasize and help you understand whenever there are restrictions in your life, you can't freely do what God has called you to do. Stay tuned and I will be right back as we dig into this topic that is going to help you rise above every ashes. Stay tuned. Welcome to Kingdom Insight with Dr. Kazumba Charles. This program is designed to help you discover treasures and truth from God's Word and also give you deeper insights and understanding of the character and nature of God. Here is your host, Dr. Kazumba Charles. As last week we had continued, we looked at our freedom. Uh, the Bible says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But we find that each and every one of us, there are moments we experience uh, fear, we experience uh, depression, we experience uh, oppression, we experience anxiety, unhealthy fear as well. But in this program, my goal is to help you understand how we become free. Uh, last week we had talked about uh, how we can find freedom and how we find that freedom. That freedom is found only in uh, Jesus Christ. As the Bible declares in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, we're doing a recap from last week. The Bible says, uh, for freedom, Christ set us free, stand firm then and do not submit again to a yoke of of, uh, bondage. We have to understand uh, when Jesus has set us free, we don't have to open certain doors. And we're going to talk about unhealthy freedom because one of the most unhealthy thing that is being promoted today is that uh, you can do anything however you want to do it. But I want to tell you as a believer or as a Christian or any person who is not a Christian that wants to walk in freedom, freedom simply means we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in the things of God so that we don't make any judgment that is not good. So let me continue here to look at uh, how we find freedom. We looked, we find freedom through Jesus Christ, and we find the freedom, as the Bible declares, uh, through the truth. Here's what John chapter 8, verse 32 says. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So most of the times, we have to understand it's not our truth that will set us free, but the truth of the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? I want to give you an example. Uh, I was driving to go preaching in uh, Toronto uh, uh, just, uh, just a few days ago. And as we were going, I know how to get to that place, to the church where I was ministering at. I know I've been there for a long time. and uh, But I did not have the current instruction that the roads were closed. And as I began to make my way to the highway where I would connect to go to Toronto, I found out that uh, that road was completely closed and uh, my timeline of arrival to where I was going changed uh, dramatically. That means I was going to be too late to get there. So I had to turn around to go to the other direction that was giving me a good timeline of arrival. But here's the problem. When I had punched in my GPS, I began to argue with the GPS. I said to GPS, I know where I'm going because I've been there. GPS says, no, take this shortcut. I say, I don't want to trust you, GPS. I know where I'm going. But listen, just because you've been to a place at some point, it doesn't mean that particular day you know where you are going because there could be traffic. There could be maybe traffic jam or roads in repair that will delay your journey. That's why it is good to have current information. And when we have information, what happens is that uh, we know where we are going. So the Word of God brings the information. And we have to be in the Word of God constantly and in the Word of God all the time in order for us to make the right decision. 
You can't just say, I've read this scripture before. You have to read it for that moment and God will speak to you in that moment. So freedom comes when we know the truth. When we know the truth of the word of God, then we are going to make judgments or decisions that are based, but that are based on the will of God for our lives. And here is what Psalm 119 verse 45 says. It says that I will walk about the freedom I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. The word precepts simply means instructions. So I walk, I will walk in freedom, for I have sought out your instruction. Wherever we miss the instructions, we will miss the destination. We have to understand that. The enemy isn't just trying to oppress us or to keep us bound in sin. He wants also to make us make decisions that are not godly at all, because I can make any decision I want. I want to make any decision I want, but I have to understand there are consequences to each and every decision that you and I will make. So here the Bible says, I will walk about in freedom for I have sought out your precepts. God's precepts or God's instructions in our lives is what helps us to make the right decision. And we have to stay constantly on that decision. This verse uh, that we just read uh, connects the concept of freedom with uh, living according to God's uh, instruction. You see, freedom is deeply connected to what God says. Today in the world, uh, we are told you can be anything. You can choose who you be. You can choose how they call you. You can choose how people address you. You can choose uh, your pronouns. You can choose your whatever you want. You can choose. But the question is, uh, is what you are choosing good? for you? Is what you are choosing the will of God? Is what you are choosing going to bring life or going to bring destruction? We have to understand that. You see, people won't care. They will tell you, choose whatever you want to choose. But when you choose, you will, you will bear the consequences of uh, your choice. We'll be looking at that in another you know, class, in another teaching that we're going to do on uh, the power of your choice. But in this verse, the scripture we read, we begin to understand that freedom is con constantly connected to living according to the instructions of God. You see, the truth of God's word is what sets us free. When you know the word of God, you know what God says, you know what God has said in your life, you can't do any other things that any other person says to you because you are a woman or a man who live by the precepts or the instructions of God. You know, the truth of knowing Jesus Jesus is what sets us free, as well as the truth of God's word leads us to freedom and peace. You see, a lot of people are not at peace. There are so many things troubling a lot of us. Because when you don't have freedom, you can't have uh, what? Peace. So here's my point to you. You can't have a freedom without peace. And you can't have peace without freedom. The both goes hand in hand. The reason why the enemy is going to torment us with uh, depression, stress, anxiety is that we are not at peace. You know, bad news uh, comes to give us what comes to destabilize our lives because uh, it unsettles us in the sense of uh, something bad is about to happen. You see, the definition of the word peace uh, is actually freedom from agitation as well as a disturbance from uh, fear, terror, or anger, or anxiety. So the enemy wants to make sure you and I are not at peace. Because when you are not at peace, you won't make the right decision. When you are not at peace, you can't pray the way you need to pray. When you are not at peace, you can never serve God the way you're supposed to serve. When you are not at peace, there's something that is unsettling you. You make a lot of mistake. That's what the enemy wants. But we have to understand in Christ, we have the peace, we have the sound mind, and we don't have to panic no matter what is happening. You see, freedom gives us peace and the quietness of mind. 
as well as uh, we don't panic because in God we are free from fear. We are free from anxiety. We are free from any oppression. That is the most beautiful thing we need to understand. And I love God because when he sets us free, he really sets us free. Now, let me talk about um, how many people abuse freedom in their lives. You see, the enemy wants to make sure you abuse that freedom. You know, I encourage you, don't abuse your freedom so that you go and do whatever you want to do. You know, many teenagers or many people, they say, when I grow up, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. I remember when I was in high school and we graduated. Uh, on that graduation, you can bear with me. I know you understand this. At that graduation, when we left high school, guess what we all had to go and do? We all had to go and drink. We all had to go and do anything that we could not do before. But you know the problem? The problem is that we also opened up the doors to the enemy and some people did not recover. I remember a very good friend of mine who went drinking that day at the, after the graduation and was run over by a car. You see, the enemy wants us to have a false freedom that uh, just because I'm not in my mother's house, I can do whatever I want to do. Just because I'm not in my, my parents' home, I can do whatever I want to do. That's a lie. The enemy is trying to set you up for something that will destroy your life. We have to understand freedom does not mean we do anything and everything we want to do. Freedom simply means we follow the instructions of God for our well-being. You know, Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 says this, For you were called but to be free, brothers and sisters, only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but save one another through love. This is where we see freedom connected to love, connected to serving one another. So the question is, before I do something, I need to ask myself, is this going to be a blessing to someone else? Before I do something, is this going to bring glory to the name of God or it is going to bring destruction to the other person? You see, freedom doesn't mean we do everything. In fact, Paul says uh, we can do everything. He says everything is permissible. You can do anything you desire to do, but here's the problem. Not everything is beneficial. Not everything is beneficial. You can drink, but you need to know, long behold, your lungs will be affected. Your liver will be affected as well as now we are told that cancer comes through alcohol. So you have to understand that everything is permissible, but does it bring the glory to the name of God? In this world where we are told you are free, you can do anything. You are free to pierce your body. You are free to do everything. Yes, you can do all that you want to do. But if you are a Christ follower, a person living with the presence of God, a person living in the will of God, the first question I would ask myself is, does this bring the glory of God or does this no bring the glory to God does this honor God does this uplift another person or does this bring you know temptation to the other person you see freedom does not mean that we do whatever we want freedom means we walk in the redemptive power of the character and the nature of God Freedom does not mean we just go and do whatever we want to do. I remember very well, each and every teenager, myself included, one of the things that I had to do as I left my mother's home, as I left school, for example, is that we went to a party all day long, but not knowing that uh, that drinking was opening up the doors to addictions, that drinking was opening up the doors to other things. So we need to understand in this world where we are being told you are free, as long as you don't kill anybody. You are free to do everything. I want you to know you are opening up the doors to the enemy to influence you. We are not as a believer. We are not of our own. We are of God. Therefore, we live according to the instructions of the word of God. We live according to the instructions of what God has said. Because of those instructions, we will lead us to life. And that's why the Bible says that if we do not choose the God's way, what happens is that death opens up in our lives. But let me tell you here, we are at liberty because of what Jesus has done in our lives. And when you have this freedom I'm talking about, your worries goes away. Your worries goes to the wayside. I want to encourage you 
you today to make the decisions that are based on God's instructions. Yes, you can do whatever you want to do. Yes, you can do everything that you want to do. But I want to tell you this. There are consequences for each and every choice that we make. We are free from from making decisions that can cost our lives because we have Christ and the Holy Spirit speaking to us. You see, the Holy Spirit is convicting you right now or speaking to you based on the action of His presence in your life. That's why it is important for us to understand we do not belong to ourselves. We belong to God. Every decision you make it can impact your family. It can impact your life for many years to come. So freedom simply means we follow God's instruction. Freedom does not mean we live however we want to live. Uh, freedom does not mean I, 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 you know, I dress the way I dress however I want. After all, it is my body. Yes, it is your body. But as a believer or a person who wants to uplift other people, the consideration is for the other person. How will the other person, it, will this bring temptation to the other person or will this bring uplifting to the other person? Those are things we need to understand what freedom really means. Yes, freedom means we are free from the power of sin and death, but freedom also means we are freed from every spirit that tries to hold us back. The decision you make today will impact your future tomorrow. The decision you make today will affect your freedom to do some things in your life. Don't live in regret live in the instructions of God. God has given us the word for a reason. And I want to share with you just in closing, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says that do not worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with the thanksgiving, uh, with thanksgiving present your request uh, to God. You see, one of the most important thing in our lives is that uh, in every situation, in every situation, don't be depressed. Don't feel stressed out. I'm not saying you won't feel that way. But in the moment of depression, in the moment of stress, we have to remember who we are, who is in our lives, who fights our battle, who provides for us. Don't fear the circumstances that will be presented in your life due to the challenge that may be there. But instead, I fear. You see, when Moses was about to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt and they came to the Red Sea, he didn't know what to do. Because in front of him was the Red Sea. Behind him was the Egyptian soldiers that were coming to attack them. What would he do? He found himself and the children of Israel pinned to the corner, not knowing what to do. And as he was probably maybe panicking because the people now began to complain to Moses, did you bring us out here to have us killed? We would rather go back. Moses probably began to panic too. He began to be depressed as well. He began to have some anxious moment. But the Lord spoke to Moses, what is in your hand? And Moses looked, he had only a staff in his hand. And God can use any challenge and anything that is in our lives. And guess what God did? He just told him, strike the water. And the water, what happens? God parted the Red Sea for them to pass through. So we have to understand you are not stuck. Don't let the enemy oppress you. Don't let the enemy defeat you. Don't let the enemy bring you down because through the power of the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says, if the grave could not hold Jesus down, that means there is nothing that can hold you down. How I declare freedom from fear. How I declare upon you freedom from anxiety. I declare upon you freedom from everything that holds you down in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the release from fear that you would trust God in whatever situation you are facing right now. Father, thank you for your praises over my sister and my brother that is watching right now as we declare in the name of Jesus, deliverance and salvation. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Join me next week again as we continue to teach the word of God that will uplift you. Until then, God bless you. Keep going higher. Thank you for watching Kingdom Insight. 
Dr. Kazumba Charles has written some powerful and insightful books that will help you discover treasures and truth of God's Word and also give you a deeper understanding of the unchanging character of God. For a love gift of $20, our office will send you one of the following books written by Dr. Kazumba Charles. The Parables of the Kingdom, Revisiting the Foundations, The Weapon of Forgiveness, or Discovering the Power of God in You. Please go to www.kazumbacharles.org to give your love gift. Your love gift will enable Dr. Kazumba Charles to continue to preach the good news of the kingdom. Thank you for your generosity.